Hey everybody, welcome back. We've been busy, busy here at the Red Barn on the 360 Swap 914. Made great progress last episode on those axles, except for the part where I put them together wrong. So how about we check in on the kitties, come back, fix the axles, and then get going again on the pedal assembly. Okay, they're out of the pop-up. They are all potty trained in the last few days. And when they say cats, kitties will climb the walls, look at this boy go. And uh, yeah, sometimes they have to learn the hard way, but for the most part, they go part way up and then they get themselves right back down. And Mama J, Juju, Julep, is hanging out, enjoying the nice afternoon. We got a little pond here with some toys in it to see if they want to play in that. There's Smash. Whoops, nope, that's Punch. I get that mixed up. Smash is over there in the corner. Bad oh, no. Papa. I was bad, wrong. Bad Papa. Yeah, Bad Papa. There's my wife telling me I'm being bad. There's Mama J. Hi, Mama. Hello. Boys are rousting about. So, yeah, this week, there's Vesper checking out the plastic bag. And no, we don't leave them unattended with something like that around. But they're loving the, the nice weather, and they are growing like mad. So it looks like we're going to have them through about July. And then they're going to go to the July uh, clinic. I've mentioned there's a monthly spay and neuter clinic. And they're all, they'll all be over two pounds by then. And it may turn out that, uh, that Julep goes in earlier than that. Because one of the things... <laughs> <laughs> it's the monkey boy! What are you doing, buddy? Look at that face. Oh my God, look at that face. <laughs> Hang on, help, it's on the way. How high do you want him to go? That's about as high as he usually goes. Okay, you wanna come down now? <gasps> There's Toddy. Toddy's like, I'm gonna mess with you. Yes, and I think there he goes. he's heading back down. <laughs> but boy, are they, are they moving around like mad. What I was gonna say is uh, Julep will likely go in sooner than that because it's good for them to get, once they're able to be uh, away from the mom, and what they're all doing now is they're eating solid food. They're eating both wet food and dry food now. And yes, they still nurse, but uh, it's actually helpful for them to bond with humans if uh, at the right time, not too soon, obviously, but uh, they're quickly approaching the point where they can be separated from mom and then they'll spend more time bonding with with us peoples and that makes them better that makes them better pets in the future so that's it for this week and we'll be back weekly until uh until they're down at morty's maybe we'll even check on and check in on them when they're there Okay, before anybody panics, notice I took the axle out to solve the problem that some of you may have realized I made, or the potential problem I may have made, and that is I didn't phase the CVs. And for those of you that may not know what that is, uh, you'll notice if I show you, this is the inside of the CV, right? This is the axle goes in this direction. And so we're looking at the inside view of the CVs. Notice how there's a fat part and there's a skinny part. Well, phasing of CVs means that when you're facing them together, the inside to inside view, you wanna line the fat part up with the skinny part. So if I put this fat part at 12 o'clock and I was gonna go put these axles together, I would take this one and make sure that this skinny part was at 12 o'clock when I slid it onto the splines. So. It doesn't matter where you put the first one, it matters where you put the second one. And like I said, I was so excited to get this on there that I didn't check the phasing. It may be right, I may have gotten super lucky, but I'm gonna pull it apart. I only have to take one of them off um, and just reclock it uh, to make sure it's in phase. So I'll take care of that and get these back in. I can just pop this off and pop off this boot 
and I can see that that one, there's the fat side at the top, which means I want a skinny one at the top on this side. And it's not. So the good news is I can just pop this apart. Now granted, it's all greasy now, which is sort of not the greatest, but oh well. The nature of CV joints. And why you should pay attention when you're building them in the first place. So let me go ahead and pop this circlip off of here. And what's really nice is these aren't even circlips. The like little flat, well, I, and you know, I'm sure there's an official name for it, but there's a, they kind of unwind off. There's a little section right there. There's a little end to it. And if I just unclip it, I'm not doing a great job of showing you, but you can see it just unwinds off of there. Forgetting the, the mess. <laughs> I love it. And now to remind myself, I'm going to re-identify my fat spot. And we want to re-clock this bad boy with the skinny side right up at 12. And how'd I do? There it is. Okay. Ugh. That is a phased CV set. Okay. And then it's the same game of finding the inside edge, getting it into the groove, and then it just kind of winds itself on there like that. Now what's nice is once it's in the groove, it spins. So you kind of can't screw it up. Anyway, there, fixed. Phase CVs. Messy, but fixed. Well, forgetting that it got a little messier than I was originally hoping, uh, given I have the grease cartridge approach to CV joint grease, uh, but we got it done. So both axles are together and correctly phased and almost ready to go in. I say almost because the sharp eye amongst you probably noticed I don't have the torque distribution washers. Here, I'll leave you a picture up here in the corner. And uh, I got to get those. But then these are ready to go in. And now, I think in the meantime, I'm going to go back to work on getting that plate figured out and getting the pedal assembly in here. All right, as I'm finalizing this pattern, I started looking. I got a couple of marks in here. This location and this location are where the tilt and pedal assembly bolts down, at least in that plane. And that's a big open space underneath the where that plate would go. And so what I'm thinking I'll do is I'm just mocking up a, a little template for a rib that I can weld to the floor and then have another 90 on it that the plate can plug weld down onto. And so that'll give a lot of strength right there in the main area where the where the brake pedal is being, you know, that the force in the brake pedal is being applied. So that'll stiffen that up. But then as I'm looking at this, it's like in order to really get this level, I need like a, a you know, almost a quarter inch plate to fill in all these gaps. And that seems excessive. As I'm noodling on that, I went ahead and finished what would be the template. And now you can see kind of how that would look. So then I thought that what I might do instead is the reason this is getting all complicated is because these ribs pop up. And <laughs> it's sometimes it's staring you right in the face. This part of the floor, the ribs drop down. Only these two pop up. Now, I'm no engineer, but it struck me that if I slice this rib out and that little rib out, and simply flip them upside down and weld them back in. I preserve that section and I can go with a, a much thinner piece of material that's still gonna be strong enough because I'll brace underneath it all I need to. And I can probably do something to abbreviate the cap of this too. And then the floor height will be this standard floor height plus the thickness of the material that I put in there. So I think that simplifies things and gets me a tidier finished result because then the plate is just one shape all one level, plug welded everywhere, braced underneath, 
And in all, I think that'll be simpler. So I'm gonna cut this out, I'm gonna cut that out, flip them upside down and weld them back in. And you can see the idea. Uh, but the good news is now with that section cut out and that next section to be cut out, I'll just have a little, you know, this will all be flat. I'll take care of that thing. And I'll just have one plate with a nice tidy flat surface. So I think that's a better way to go. And now it's too late. I cut a hole in the floor. But as my buddies who have, uh, have been around the red barn have heard me say before many times, it's only metal, not that big a deal. Clearanced. Knock that out. Cut those pieces out. But here's the all plugged up template for that plate. And I also cut those studs out, as you might have seen. But that is where that will now go. And then I'm just going to weld that, weld that closed. And we will have the pedal assembly mounted here. I think I've come up with a better idea. In looking at this, it seems like it's just going to be easier to cut out a section of the floor and just weld in a flat piece of sheet metal just to replace everything, including that entire rear round plug area. So what I want to do is take you underneath the car now and show you what I'm thinking. So here we are under the car. And what you're seeing is this is where the master cylinder comes through. And this will give you an idea of what Porsche did to strengthen this pedal box. You can see there's a whole bunch of shape and section to this area. And then there's also this reinforcement that runs back, ties in to all these different levels and provides, you know, it's almost, I don't know, it's almost an inch deep uh, back in there. And I think the good news is, it's hard to get the perspective, but this is the, uh, the front suspension crossbar and it is, you know, you can't see, but it's lower than this section of the car. So what I'm thinking is if I replace this whole panel and come up with my own structure and duplicate it kind of as a doubler over here, I'll have a huge chunk of floor support underneath that pedal box. And so what I think it got is this thing. But believe it or not, that thing is not as low the suspension cross member is still lower than this. And that much section gives me an absolute ton of strength. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I think you'll probably get a kick out of this. Here's the piece. And it's kind of cool looking, right? It's got some taper to it so it transitions to nothing at the back nice and strong and uh, you might think well where'd you get that <laughs> if I come over here to one of these workstations look at the table leg and I was looking at stuff yesterday and I thought you know and you can see it kicks out at the bottom and so all I did was I cut I cut a section off of that one. I had a spare one and I cut a section off of it and just opened it up. You can see I just cut it right at that bend and folded it flat and then cut another section out of the one of the cutoff pieces, made a little triangular piece, welded it in there, folded this edge down at random angle. And uh, now I've got this sort of cool looking shape. And I didn't bother filming making that. It's just tedious, you know, cutting and welding, and I, I can't imagine it would be of interest. Um, you know, maybe the thought process that I went through while I was doing it, I don't know. So I just went ahead and made it. If you'd like to see stuff like that coming together, you know, let me, leave me a comment and uh, I'll, I'll just start filming it. Uh, but anyway, let me know what you think. Big hole in floor. And uh, yeah, another shout out to Harbor Freight for the cheap little body saw. These things are awesome. 
I even end up using the Harbor Freight blades, which are like 50 cents a piece, and they work okay. They don't last forever, but uh, you know, they work. Really controllable. Anyway, so now I will make a template of that shape, so that'll get all stitched in. I'll have a completely flat section here, get that rib put in. And then what I think I'm gonna do is go ahead and put that plate in, mount the pedal assembly to it, make the holes, mount, you know, get the holes for the pedal assembly in the top section, you know, in this section of floor, and then fit that other structural support piece underneath so that the bolts actually are captured in the channel. That ensures that that channel is right dead under the, the area of the floor that's gonna be taking the load from the brake force. All right, so I just made a template of the cutout in the floor and got a piece of 18 gauge. Just scribed my line around the template and I'm just gonna go ahead and trim that to shape. So now I'm gonna start fitting this and after much Fitting and butzing, we have a patch panel. And that's always a challenge, welding upside down and in the footwell. And you can see I ran into one problem there, and that is I completely forgot where I had put those magnets. <laughs> and I was welding right up onto a magnet. And let me tell you, arcs don't like magnets. And it blew a hole in it so I'll just have to tidy that up and I paid a little more attention on the top part so this is just tacked in place there's a couple of you know little adjustments I got to make but uh, yeah so there we go flat floor one step closer and then I take the cardboard template and I traced it onto a piece of 11 gauge and what you can see as many of these little corners are, are rounded or they're you know like 45 um, and there's a you know there's a bunch of that and then the front up here starts to curve so trying to get a fit um, what I've discovered is if I just go after the edge and bevel it a little bit I can sneak the edge of the plate closer to the car chassis so there is the flat floor and it is it it worked out great i mean it is not it doesn't rock one bit it's mostly going to be plug welded and then maybe a few stitch welds a couple of places up at the front uh you know but it's not going anywhere that that's really nice and then as you saw earlier you know i still have to weld that in but uh and then i am going to put another rib under there just for extra strength I got the pedal plate all ready to go and trimmed up and I got the location of the pedals worked out used my transfer line from the measurements on the chassis figured out where I wanted everything to be and started marking and I'm just gonna finish this last hole um, this is another cool tool it's a wrench dike a wrench dike center punch it's a little spring-loaded thing so uh, instead of trying to use a hammer and a punch, which some kind sometimes can move, they're usually okay. But this, um, you can just really simply tip up to where you want to mark for your drill hole, and you just push down on it until it clicks. And it's got like a, I don't know, an impact spring thing, and it you know doesn't matter what you're hitting it. I mean, you can almost punch through aluminum with this thing. But anyway, now I've got this marked, so I'm just going to go drill it. <laughs> can see I got the first of the stiffening ribs welded in this is the the base blank and it's gonna sit back in here once it's done but I'm too excited to get the pedals in here so you can see too that two of the holes are outboard of the recess and two of these fasteners fit right down in there so what I gotta do is set this in and those drop right through those holes now. So I'm gonna go under the car and get the nuts on there. So 
So there's the pedal assembly essentially ready to go in. And now I can give it a kind of a test. Give it an ergo test. big clunky shoes too. I don't know if that's fair. There, that's better. There it is. So I think that's pretty good. We're almost there. Yep, almost there. So the final steps are kind of boring and I didn't film them because I don't think it's worth filming me drilling holes in the floor and things like that. But those two holes got opened up. I haven't done any more welding here. And this is all scratched up now. I'll re uh, weld through primer that before uh, before the plate goes in. But the reason those holes get opened up is here's the pedal assembly bolted to the plate. These nuts will get welded onto the plate, and because they're they're captured, they'll be you know covered by everything, so I won't be able to get to them. So these will get welded on. But now that this is all put together, and all the clearances are there, when this gets put in. You can see why it gets scratched there. So yeah, I'll reprimer that. But there's the pedal assembly in place, at least on the top side. So now if I take you around to under the car, you can see what's going on. Here's the fasteners coming through. Still haven't welded this on yet because this is all getting everything set for final fitment. And then here's the reinforcement piece. So what I did is I just knocked this edge off so that I could sneak it over as close that way and capture these fasteners inside this channel. So this will end up sitting approximately like that. And with this in place, I'll trim these edges down. These wings don't need to be that wide. They just need to be wide enough to support a, a plug weld. So I'll probably be knocking a bit of that off. That'll get welded on. It's still not completely trimmed yet. It needs to go over that way just a little bit more. And then this front piece will either be trimmed off or I'll bend it up and weld it onto the chassis here. But now I've got a ton of strength in this part of the floor. And, you know, that's the plane where two of those fasteners are. And the other plane is down inside this recess, probably about in here. So this whole area is completely resistant to moving under that braking force. So I'm pretty happy with how that's turning out, and, and I think that's pretty good progress for this episode. So I'm going to wrap it up and say pedal assembly, almost done. Uh, but thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Comments and questions down below, please. Subscribe if you haven't. I'd really appreciate it, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Everybody take care. Bye-bye.